Hi everyone, my name is Ollie. I'm a third year medical student at the University of Warwick. Welcome to the start of this brand new series, which is aimed at getting you familiar with this, the Raspberry Pi. The goal is that by the end of this series, you will be a comfortable and competent user and programmer in the Raspberry Pi ecosystem. In order to accomplish that, we're first gonna familiarize ourselves with the system, have a look at why we're interested in the Raspberry Pi, all the components that make it up, then as quickly as possible, we'll get you into coding, programming, and building your own projects using the Pi. I'm very much a believer in learning by doing, and so the focus of this project is going to be practical. I'd be absolutely delighted if you'd follow along with the videos at home, get yourself a Pi and start building projects. It's a really exciting field to be in and the community of Pi makers is absolutely fantastic. Everyone is really supportive and helpful. And I think it represents a really important tool that more people, particularly medical professionals, should be familiar with. Now, this series is aimed chiefly at medical students, although obviously students of any discipline or health professionals, really anyone who wants to get involved. So let's not waste any more time and jump into this first video. So in this first tutorial, we're going to explore what is the Raspberry Pi and why should you care? As I think most of you can hopefully appreciate, it's a small green circuit board fundamentally. What makes it special are two key factors. Firstly, it's a fully fledged, fully functional computer all by itself. It's actually the best selling British computer of all time by units sold, and it's available for less than $50. So just for a little bit of history, the Raspberry Pi was first developed and released by the Raspberry Pi Foundation in 2012. The aim being to produce a single board computer like these that we have before us, in order to promote the teaching of basic computer sciences, coding and programming in schools in the UK, but also in developing countries. Over time, we've seen many different models of Raspberry Pi. And as of 2020, over 30 million of these boards in one form or another have been sold. The name for those interested comes from the old traditions in microcomputing, arcing back to systems such as Tangerine, Acorn and Apricot computers. And of course, sometime later, Apple. The Pi part of the name is simply a reference to the fact that these boards were designed to run Python, the simplistic coding language that we're going to be using for most of the projects in this series. I'm sure at this point you're wondering, why does anyone care? What do people actually use these for in the real world? As I said, the original intention with these boards was that they would allow complete beginners and novices in computer science to run simplistic programs for educational purposes in a cheap sandbox environment where they can afford for things to go wrong. In the wild, however, what we've actually seen is Pi is being used to power an incredible array of devices things that I'm sure the creators had never even envisioned. People use them to build weather stations, security cameras, environmental monitors, more complicated devices such as robots, Raspberry Pi powered supercomputers that handle problems like protein folding to discover new drugs, and Pis have even been deployed by NASA on the International Space Station. I've had a lot of fun over the last few years playing around with the Raspberry Pi, and I'm a huge believer in them as a valuable learning tool for people across all disciplines. As being able to build simple but functional devices to automate tasks and measure things we might be interested in measuring, adds several new really important strings to our bow and allows us to solve new problems. So that's why I'm passionate about the Pi. That's why I want to help you become familiar with the system, learn a bit more and get you building devices for yourself and sharing them with the world. One of the key driving principles behind the Pi and why it's been so successful is the concept of it being open source. That is a design that's freely available for people to use and improve upon and share with the community. And this holds true for most of the devices that people build with them. So I hope that's cleared you up a bit on the background and history of the Raspberry Pi and why we're so interested in them. If I've managed to keep your attention thus far and you're interested in learning a little bit more, in the next video, I'll walk you through the anatomy of the Raspberry Pi circuit board step by step, component by component, and we can familiarize ourselves with the layout and functions of each part of the board. Thanks for watching guys, and I'm looking forward to working on these projects with you. Take care and I'll see you next time.